Hello, welcome back to our IT landing Nugget courses. And again, for this Nugget course, it's around Splunk. So we spoke earlier about the part one, you know, what is the concept behind Splunk REST API. And then we went through the definition and we did mention, you know, uh, what is for and different interface behavior. And then we move to an example, basic example and then we mention how we can do get, delete, and post. We're still under that part. For today, we will cover more examples around creating sample message. This include the XML request, XML response. As you can see, very basic example, it's uh, utilizing the, you know, C URL, we mentioned that earlier, to get the, uh, a universal resource uh, locator and then later on we will do the CURI which will do the resource identifier okay universal resource identifier now creating a sample message uh, you should do the request and then you can browse to the message themselves and which means the local host port services and then the response will be title ID updating author and Again, it's an XML page uh, based, and then you can create a read message as well. This includes the XML request, a user account, admin, passing local host service messages, title, author, open search, and then you get the result, entry, and same thing apply to the delete message. Next is connecting to Splunk D. When you use the REST API, use the Splunk D management port, which is 8089 and the secure HTTPS protocol. So 443 with 8089 protocol to be able to connect to Splunk D. Very basic example, HTTPS localhost. I mean, this in production will be server name, could be IP address, and for this environment, we, it could be for production, it has to be fully qualified name, FEQDN, maybe external available through DNS and nothing and so on. We are talking about this very basic example here. And to, to use the unsecure HTTP protocol, you can select this enable Splunk SSL property to false. Because this is, if set, was set to true, which means we need certificate and we need port 443. Next is supporting the HTTP methods. The Splunk REST API exposes the following REST method subset. And you can check the um, uh, reference manual where you can utilize this method of corresponding uh, operation, which will be get to read if the endpoint represent collection list of members of collection uh, iterate over resource. And you go to post, which create an update. You use the post method to create a resource and update. And you can use delete method to use a delete method for endpoint. All the methods will return HTTP status code, either 200, 203, and indicate either successful or failure support. Okay. Uh, so Part of that one, uh, it could be the using the URI encoding, you know, universal resource identifier. Typically, the parameter associated with the URL, it will be unique, and we can utilize it to, for the encoding with the surface name and the monitors, and the endpoint associated with it. Next is authentication. Now, with authentication and authorization, Username and password authentication is required to access endpoint and REST operation. Supplying users must have role and responsibility and uh, based on authorization endpoint. Users with admin rights such as admin can access authorization information by the Splunk web. To view the assigned resource to users or permission, you got setting access control on users to determine the capabilities. You can do access control and click roles. The default authentication session timeout is one hour. However, it is configurable 
which means you can change the session timeout via the server.config in the general stanza which means that target the token based you know authentication that's all what I had for you for today hopefully uh, you have learned something useful and I shall see you in part three thank you for watching and